I'm Ruth Robson. Welcome to this armchair version of a literary pilgrimage of Durham. You're sitting at home and I'm doing the walking. We will travel through time with stories of ancient scribes, famous saints, romantic poets, political discourse and contemporary writers, seeing the city from many perspectives. We'll discover much that has been written about Durham, inspired by Durham, associated with Durham and written in Durham, a city with a UNESCO World Heritage Site at its heart. Its origins, as we know it today, start on the holy island of Lindisfarne and the monastic community founded by St Aidan in around 634 AD. Cuthbert became prior and then their bishop, dying in 687 AD, venerated and recognised as a saint. In 793, Viking invasions caused the community to flee, carrying the body of their beloved saint, his relics and their substantial archive of manuscripts. When the community of St Cuthbert arrived in Durham in 995 AD, the place they came to was called Dun Home, a combination of the old English word for hill, Dun, with the Norse for island, home. They arrived in Durham by following a milkmaid looking for her cow. The 12th century monk Simeon of Durham is one of the many who has written about the tale. An Anglo-Saxon white church was built, replaced by the Normans with the cathedral we know today. Durham Cathedral houses both the shrine of St Cuthbert and the tomb of the Venerable Bede, the Anglo-Saxon monk and scholar known as the father of English history because of his book The Ecclesiastical History of England, written around 731 AD. Our attention now turns to the castle where Sir Walter Scott and William Wordsworth have both dined, one when it was a bishop's palace and the other when it had just become the home of the first college of Durham University, founded in 1832 by Bishop William Van Mildert. A contemporary writer who sometimes uses Durham and North East England as a backdrop is prize-winning novelist Pat Barker, who lives in Durham. She's best known for her novels about the First World War, the Regeneration Trilogy, the last in the series, The Ghost Road, winning the Booker Prize for Fiction in 1995. Next, we journey to Red Hills, the site of the Durham Miners Hall. The second Saturday in July is a special day in Durham, the Day of the Gala. Prize-winning author D.B.C. Pierre, who lived in the city in the 1960s, says, to me, the gala is the most joyous and emotional day it's possible to have. First, there was the pride you felt at marching behind the lodge banner towards the race course. Then, there was the moment when we stopped outside the county hotel and the band played their serenade to the big shots on the balcony. And finally, there was the parade to the cathedral for the miners' service. From Red Hills, we travelled to the Coal Pits Hotel the original home of Coal Pitch Poetry, still called, but meeting elsewhere, having outgrown the size of the pub's back room. Beyond Coal Pits are what have to be the most spectacular allotments in the country. Formerly a quarry, providing stone for the building of Durham Castle and the Cathedral. The poet, Gillian Alnett, lives in County Durham. Her poem, The Garden in Esh Winning, concludes, and all the hills rush down to Durham. Our literary pilgrimage moves to the River Weir, to Prebens Bridge, with its famed quote from Sir Walter Scott's epic poem, Harold the Dauntless. Scott's poem, Canto 14, of Marion, immortalises the journey of St Cuthbert to Durham. And after many wanderings past, he chose his lordly seat at last, where his cathedral, huge and vast, looks down upon 
tu vida. Old Elvet links Durham to the Pre-Raphaelite movement and women's suffrage. Number 29, now a Durham University building, is the birthplace of writer and suffragette Violet Hunt, the daughter of writer Margaret Rain Hunt and painter Alfred William Hunt. As we walk, look for a large gold teapot. It marks the location of former bookshop House of Andrews, which was founded in 1808. The Durham UNESCO World Heritage Site has literature and learning at its heart. The poem Durham, regarded as the last poem in Old English, is a celebration of the city. In translation, it starts, The city is celebrated through the Kingdom of the Britons, placed on a steep eminence, surrounded with cliffs, wonderfully large. Many of the buildings around Palace Green, the name of the grassed area between the cathedral and the castle, house collections of books as part of Durham University. Palace Green Library is home to the university's special collections and an exhibition space. The south side of the cathedral has the most complete set of monastic buildings remaining in the UK and is home to the cathedral's library with manuscripts dating as far back as the 8th century. We've just experienced a small part of a literary pilgrimage of Durham. There's much, much more. W.H. Auden, Lewis Carroll, A.S. Byatt, and many other writers have connections to the city. The collective archives in the city are immense, and there are tales of the infamous. If you can, put on your boots, download the audio tour, and off you go. If you prefer, you can always sit in your armchair and listen to it at home. Whichever you choose, I hope you find it illuminating. Mm -hmm.